I was born in a suburb of Boston, Massachusetts, uh, Newton, Mass. I was a fairly good basketball player, and I had a lot of scholarship offers to a lot of good schools. So I got a call from West Point, and frankly, I wasn't that much interested in going to West Point, but I went for a visit, and that made all the difference. That's where I wanted to go to college. I wanted to be an airborne ranger infantryman. I mean, that's, I was no question in my mind, that's exactly what I wanted to do. On November 3rd, 1966, 25 year old Robert Foley was commanding a company of the 27th Infantry Division, operating in the small hamlet of Quan Dao Tieng, South Vietnam. Another company had been engaged in vicious fighting near a North Vietnamese regimental base and was sustaining massive casualties. Foley's mission was to aid his unit's sister company and get the remaining GIs to safety. We had just returned from about eight days of search and destroy operations and we were looking forward to some rest and we got a call from battalion headquarters saying, you need to get ready. There's a very difficult operation, and it turned out it was called Operation Attleboro up in War Zone C, which was about 30 or 40 miles northwest of Saigon, right close to the Cambodian border. Major Guy Malloy, who was the battalion commander of the 1st Battalion, 27th Infantry, which was our sister battalion, he told me, he said, look, here's the situation. You have a company that has been isolated. They're pretty well surrounded by Viet Cong. The company commander was killed. And so he said, your mission is to go through our friendly front lines and link up with Charlie Company, 2nd Battalion, 27th, and evacuate all casualties, bring them back out of there. It was hot. The sunlight was sort of filtering through the trees. The vegetation was thick, it was very thick jungle, and you could hardly see anything. The visibility was limited to 10 or 15 meters. The situation was uh, a little vague in terms of the intelligence and where the Viet Cong were, but we knew that they were putting up heavy resistance. We crossed the, the line of departure there about 7 o'clock in the morning, and we didn't get 30 or 40 meters uh, past there when the Viet Cong, who were in bunker complex, opened up with machine guns, with rifle fire, throwing hand grenades. They had snipers in trees. It was noisy, it was chaotic, and I had soldiers getting hit left and right. Two of my radio telephone operators were hit. I immediately went to them and I helped them get evacuated with some other soldiers. We got them back to get medical attention. I came back up and there was a machine gunner who was right in front of me and he got hit. So I helped him and moved him back to the rear. By that time, I was angry because my soldiers were getting hit. I didn't want to get pinned down. So we came back up there and with another soldier, we linked as much ammunition as we could with this M60 machine gun. And then I told the soldier that was helping me, I said, you stay back, I'm going in. I picked that machine gun up with all the ammunition that, I, that we could possibly get linked on it. I just went straight forward into the jungle, firing that machine gun in front of me and got inside that bunker complex. And there were three bunkers in there and I immediately started firing at those three bunkers. And all of a sudden, it got quiet. And I stopped and I realized a couple things. One is that I'm a company commander. I'm not supposed to be doing this all by myself. I'm supposed to be commanding my troops. And I also looked down and I was running low on ammunition. And as I turned, I could see my soldiers coming in behind me, filling in. Foley's valiant action inspired his men to push forward for several hours, distracting and suppressing the enemy until another company could come in and assist. Foley and his courageous group were instrumental in the successful rescue of their embattled comrades. The Medal of Honor was presented to me on 1 May 1968 by President Johnson. I remember 
that as I stood there on the platform in the East Room of the White House with Sergeant John Baker, who was in my company, we got the award together. I was looking out at a sea of media reporters, flashing bulbs, members of Congress and, and other people who were there. That was a, a very memorable day. Talk about being nervous. Uh, combat is intimidating, but being uh, going to the White House to see the President of the United States as a young captain of the United States Army was an uh, intimidating process. I wear it in uh, remembrance of, first of all, those great soldiers who served with me, the Wolfhounds of the 2nd Battalion, 27th Infantry, especially the uh, 17 killed and 27 wounded on that one day on 5 November 1966. That was a very difficult and devastating day for me against a very difficult and determined enemy. And I think of all the things that I learned from being a rifle company commander in Vietnam, the question I would always ask myself is, what is it that motivates these soldiers to do what they have to do on the battlefield every day? Because, you know, they see their buddies getting shot, getting killed, getting wounded, and yet they're there the next morning to get on the helicopters to go out for another helicopter assault. There's a special bond that is set up when you are with your fellow soldiers going through dangerous things every day. That, that you want to reach out and care for them and protect them. And so there's this caring and compassion and consideration that's there every single day. And it's not about you. You're worried about your fellow soldier. I was worried about my whole company. There was um, just kind of a, an unwritten creed that they would not let their buddies down. And um, I found that to be uh, the single thing that just makes up the American soldier today.